Active Data for Excel lets you sample in three different ways. Active Data supports random sampling, monetary unit or PPS sampling, and also stratified random sampling, which can be found in the stratification function. Here we're going to take a simple sample of five items. We're going to sample the entire spreadsheet, that is between row 2, the first row of data, and the last row. And we're going to accept the system generated seed and press finished. This will result in a new sheet containing the sampled rows along with links back to the original rows. At the end of this video, there is information about the statistical sampling methodology that we use in Active Data. Using this methodology, you can calculate the number of items required for your sample. You can try different values for the expected error rate, the tolerable error rate, and the beta risk or risk of incorrect acceptance. Here we'll use 5% and click Calculate. This produces the resulting sample size for us along with the number of errors we should expect and a table that will be used later on when we evaluate the sample. For documentation purposes we can print this information or save it to a sheet. We can refine our input criteria for example, if we reduce our tolerable error rate to 5%, we'll get a larger sample size. The same thing will happen if we increase the expected error rate to 4%. If we increase the risk to 9%, the resulting sample size will be smaller. If we also bump the tolerable error rate up to 6% and reduce the expected error rate, we'll get a much more workable sample size. The criteria that you use here will be dependent upon your circumstances. Once the sample size has been determined, we can click Finish to produce the resulting sample sheet. You can perform a PPS or dollar unit sample using active data. That's under the Monetary Unit Sampling tab. Here we'll select the Dollar Amount field that we want to sample, and we'll calculate the sampling interval based on all of the criteria that you see here. Of course, this criteria will be specific to your situation. Here we're going to use a materiality of $250,000 and an expected misstatement of $100,000. We'll set the risk to 5%, and the software will produce a resulting sampling interval with us, an approximation as to what the sample size would be, as well as basic precision. Again, for documentation purposes, we can print or save this information as a sheet. Once we have the sampling interval, we'll accept the system-generated random seed, and then we'll choose either the fixed interval or cell selection method. We'll use fixed interval in this case. This produces our output sample sheet containing the book value field, which was the invoice amount, the audited value field, we'll use this later to enter in our checked values, and other mechanical information uh, that will help you see how the sample was performed. Active Data also produces a link to the original row, and as we scroll to the right, we'll find the original data items from the sheet that we sampled. When we're ready to evaluate our sample and to project the results onto the entire population, we can go back to our sample worksheet and enter in the audited values for each row where there was a discrepancy between the book value and the actual value determined.
once we've done that, we can click on the sample button and then select the monetary unit sample evaluation tab. We'll specify what the book value and audited value fields are. We'll confirm the sampling interval that we used and we will accept the default risk level of 5%. This will produce the resulting analysis in a new spreadsheet. It'll contain a table of the misstatements along with information about each misstatement or error that was found. It also contains a projection of the total misstatement as well as the upper error limit. At the end of the video, we'll show you where you can get the book that documents all of this. Active Data also supports stratified random sampling. Here we'll stratify the dollar amount field for our invoices. We'll create fixed band sizes of $2,500. And then we'll perform the stratification. Next, we'll check the Show Sample column option. And then we'll enter in the desired sample sizes. Now we'll click the Sample button, followed by Finished. And the stratification is produced along with another sheet containing the sampled items. The sampling methodology we used is based on a book called Sampling, a Guide for Internal Auditors. This is published by the Institute of Internal Auditors and is available from their bookstore. We've highlighted the address of the website up at the top of the video.